what you can't explain is coming back again. I can see. Hey, how's it going? Hello, digital control systems people. Hello, Jack. Hello, Brandon. Turns with zeros. Hash brown swag. I remember you. Ad na 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 na. Kipros Smiley's fate says good morning, fellas. Good morning. Good morning, you guys. Kate says, what's up, Dr. E? Hey, Kate. Good to see you. How are you doing? Happy spring semester, says Liam. Yes, happy spring. Hashburn, I had to switch this class out with something else to graduate, and now I'm mad. No. Uh, T. Jackson, hi. Kate says, I'm good. It's lunchtime. Yeah. It is. I haven't had lunch yet. Hank, what's up? Turns with zeros. Can't wait to graduate via a PowerPoint presentation. Is that... Is that are you, are we sure they're gonna do that, or is there gonna be um, an actual thing? There might be a drive-through um, graduation. Only time will tell. Yeah. Hello, Ching Han. Hello, hello. Oh man. Oh, man. PowerPoint presentation was super stinky. Yeah, spring 2020, a little bit of a bummer. <laughs> I mean, I graduated with a PowerPoint slide. It's not that bad. LOL. <laughs> uh... I, um, class of 2020, you guys are very great sports. That's, is a really tough semester. Really proud of you guys. Pika Pika says, I didn't even get to watch the PowerPoint sad face. Wow, wow, wow. So 2021 is way better than 2020, right? Things have really turned around um, everywhere. We're on a, a bright, new, shiny trajectory. Yep, everything, everything was fixed. Let me see if I can change this chat box. Let's make it... Let's make it look a little clean. No, that's it's too small. Let's make the font a little bigger. Let's try that. Um, no Estes sponsored emotes. We need to make some. You guys can submit some emotes actually that's a really great idea 
If you guys make some emotes, I'd be super happy. Uh, once January 1st did, it was 2019 all over again. Uh, uh, do we need those blank sheets in the course documents? Yes. Let me, let me show you here. Let's pull up UB Learns. Let me show you something. Okay, so this is our UB Learns page. If you go over to Course Documents, you're going to go over to Notes, Class Handouts, and then these are the handouts for this week. And we're going to go through this one today. So this is the way I like to do notes. Um, you're going to have the same sheet that I have. If we go over, let's see. See, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, if we go over here, I'm going to have that same handout. We'll fill this out. You can follow along. It's just a really great way to keep up. And I'll try to get these handouts up in advance so that you have time to either print them out or download them. I'll do my best. So welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Okay, so let's, I have a lot like I want to get through, but we probably better start with the syllabus, start at the beginning, and um, just run it through. Okay, so I got this syllabus on the other tab. Blah, 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 blah. And let's just quickly go through this, see if you have questions, concerns, but I just want to give you an idea of the format of the course. So this is a totally online course, and we're going to meet right here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for 50 minutes. And um, it's synchronous. I think it's good for us to have some in-person, well, I mean, this isn't in-person, but it's at least like a virtual live connection with somebody. And I think that's good for all of us. And it'll help you just keep pace with the course. Ando says, are they recorded? Yes, they're recorded. The videos will be on Twitch right after the stream ends. And then videos on Twitch disappear after like 18 days, I think. So what I do is I migrate the videos over to YouTube as well. So if you ever miss a lecture, you can either find the video on Twitch or YouTube, but come here live. That is my, my um, advice to you. Okay, so digital control systems. There's a little description right here, an overview. So, okay. This is basically giving you the foundational knowledge if you want to control something with a computer or microcontroller, which is how we do controls the vast majority of the time nowadays. A computer is involved at some stage. Um, and I'll give you a little more details on that when we get into the handout. So the way I look at this course, it's kind of broken into thirds. So the first third is we talk about discrete time systems. So this is different from continuous time. A computer looks at something in uh, slices of time. If we read data from a sensor on a computer, we're going to collect that data at discrete intervals. So there's a different mathematical way of looking at systems that just progress in slices. So that's like the first part of this course, looking at that discrete time math. And then the second part is we go into transform techniques for digital control system design. This is where we're gonna go into the Z domain 
If you've heard of the S domain, if you've heard of Laplace transforms, this is like the S domain, but for discrete time systems. And uh, so when we go to the Z domain, that's where we're gonna have transfer functions. Transfer functions are great for controls. Is there heavy MATLAB in this class? Says Benny. There, there is heavy MATLAB. MATLAB is going to be used. I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna do some, I'm planning on some like code along sessions and lecture so that we can, Shrek says love MATLAB forever. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a lot of MATLAB. MATLAB goaded. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, there's heavy MATLAB in pretty much all of Dr. E's classes. I, I think that's a fair assessment. Even though, eventually, I'd like to transition to Python. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I mean, when you get out in the world, I think Python is more likely what you'd be using, just because it's free. Uh, what if you're not the best at MATLAB? <laughs> uh, so that, that's okay. You don't have to be the best, uh, but you have to be willing to put in some time to catch up. And I'm gonna do my best, give you little code snippets. Um, so if, if you struggle with MATLAB, just be ready to, to put in some time. Okay, yeah, Python, Python. Abel says, let's stick to MATLAB. We're gonna stick to MATLAB this semester, but I'm just thinking long-term Python. Okay, we're going to, in the final third of the course, go into state space techniques for digital controls. This is the most popular and most modern technique. And there are really cool topics in state space. Um, my favorite topic is estimators. Um, an estimator, I can't get into it too much here, but estimators are the coolest thing. Um, Hank says, no Python, please. You're safe this semester. All right, I put some prerequisites here. Most of you are mechanical engineering students, uh, but some of you are from electrical and, and maybe other places. Are, are, is, is anybody outside of electrical and mechanical? Is there any like computer science people here? I don't know, but, but most of us are mechanical. Is there any chance you post what you did in MATLAB, uh, but in Python for some things? Just gives us a chance to see what it looks like. Ooh, um, maybe. But that is the best way to learn Python. If you're familiar with MATLAB, um, actually there's a really great website that shows the connection between them. All right, Aerospace, Meki, Ashish is from CSE. Welcome, welcome. So these are, MAE courses. The first one is, it's called Dynamic Systems. And it's, um, it teaches you about how linear differential equations behave and how we use them to model dynamic systems. A lot of the theory we cover in this class is going to be closely related to the content from MAE 340. If you haven't taken this class, you're still going to be fine. But you may have to review some of this stuff. Can you share that resource? Pika says, remind me at the end of this class, there's an awesome link for learning Python if you already know MATLAB. Okay, so MAE340, that's called Dynamic Systems. MAE443, this is Continuous Control Systems. If you've already taken this, how many of you guys have taken MAE443 with Dr. Singh? It's a great course. It covers continuous control systems. Um, this course is going to cover, okay, great. We got a couple. It's gonna hit a lot of those topics again, but the theory is, there's some significant differences in the theories. I have, I have horrible, <laughs> it was a great course. I, I enjoyed it. I took it as a graduate student here. EE signals and systems and said, says Ando, okay, great. Sing is the goat. I really like Sing. I like Sing. 
my favorite class that I ever took was Optimal Control Systems with Dr. Singh. And I didn't get an A in the course. But it was my favorite ever. D Stratus coming from physics and math. Okay, great. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, so these courses, if you come from this background, you're very well positioned uh, with the content we're going to cover. If you haven't taken this stuff, don't freak out. I'm going to give you all the prerequisite stuff that you need. Just know that um, it, maybe I'll point out along the way. You might want to look into this stuff a little bit more. Okay, so this, this I won't get too much into this. This is just saying that, look, we're meeting on Twitch, and I think it's best if you come to every lecture and engage with me, engage with your classmates. If something is making no sense, if it's not working, let me know. Let's make some changes because if you guys aren't following what I'm doing, what is the point? All right. So some rules for Twitch chat and I rarely, if ever, have any problems. Everybody's great, but just be kind. Just treat others the way you want to be treated. The golden rule. We also have a Discord server. Let's see. If you have never used Discord before, it looks like this. This is our Discord server. Um, there's a couple text channels. So you can just, you can chat. Uh, you can ask. I don't get this homework. OMG. Um, actually, you should be more specific than that. That'll be more constructive. And there is off topic. Uh, this is just more for fun. You can post some memes. We have um, voice channels. So this is where we're going to do office hours. Um, you just come to Discord. I'll be hanging out in this voice channel. Actually, I should probably leave that channel. Um, and, and we'll interact there. Hey, welcome to office hours, Krishna. <laughs> Everybody's joining office hours. Hey, welcome to office hours, Krishna. Okay, I'm gonna. All right, I'm gonna leave the. I'm gonna leave the Discord. Okay, you guys know what it is. And there's study rooms in there too. Uh, you can share video screen and so on and so forth. Abel says, w "Will you be recording every single lecture and uploading it to YouTube?" Yes. Yes, I will. All right, let's get back. Let's get back. Uh, when is my office hours? Fantastic question. Right now, I've put it at 4 to 5 p.m. on Mondays. On Discord. But I don't know. Does that time work for you guys? Can you make it? I was also thinking of maybe changing it to Thursdays. But that's what it is right now. Monday works for Shrek. Thursday would be better for Amin. Monday's good. Advanced controls is at four to five. Wait, fancy, what what day is advanced controls? How many of you guys are taking that one? Four to five twenty-five on Thursday. Advanced controls is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Thank you, Kate. Okay. Okay. We'll find a day that works. Now, if when I schedule office hours, you just can't make it for whatever reason, we can find other ways to connect. 494 is on Thursdays from 2.20 to 5.10. Okay, so definitely Monday. All right, we'll start with Monday. And then I'll... Um, I'll possibly add more hours. Okay. Okay. These are learning outcomes. Check this out later. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Textbooks. I don't require a textbook for this course. However, these books are fantastic, particularly this first one. 
like, uh, let's see, let's see. This book by Franklin, man, uh, this has taught me a lot about control systems because they just have a very intuitive way of explaining things. So if you were gonna pick up one of these, I would get this. Trogdor says, I love textbooks. I want my own little library in the future. I love books. Um, if you're gonna pick one up, pick this up. The Ogata textbook is also uh, very, very great. Can I lengthen my office hour time? Possibly. What I find though with office hours is that often they're underutilized. Like sometimes I've had up to three office hours per week and I don't get as many visitors. So I wanted to start with one hour and then just see what people need. I'm not I'm not um, against expanding office hours. Is this one hard to find like the 436 textbook was? I'm not sure. I bought this book mm, two years ago. If you guys have trouble, let me know. But I think that's a great book. Okay, let's talk about, let us talk about assessments. Most of what we're gonna do is homework. Um, and that's why, okay, so you're gonna see two numbers here. The one in parentheses is for graduate students and the one without parentheses is undergrad. So we have a mixture of undergraduates and graduates in this course. And f whether you're a grad or an undergrad, homework is the thing here. Um, I'm gonna try to give it like every week and try to make it just useful, engaging. Visitors come when assignments start hitting hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna have one midterm exam. Now, the point of this midterm is, I don't plan on making it difficult. I want to test some basic comprehension early in the course like uh i think this is during week five or six or something but those first weeks we're going to cover a lot of discrete time math and there's just some fundamentals i want to make sure you 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 um you get them so if i have this midterm i think it's going to provide some motivation to really assimilate that knowledge which is going to help you later in the course um I'm planning on having it on a Saturday online. I don't have all of the details yet, but I'm not going to, it's going to be like a wide space of time. It's going to be um, open note so you can use class resources. Um, I'll tell you more about the exact format, but it's going to be individual and I will be very strict about um, having no collaboration on that. So Pika Pika says like a take-home exam. Exactly. So it's going to be like a take-home exam. And um, more is going to come on that. But all you need to know right now is this midterm isn't supposed to kill you. It's supposed to just test basic comprehension um, towards the beginning of the class. Then we're going to have some projects. I think these are the most interesting things. It's going to be like a real control systems task where I give you some constraints <laughs> not in space we'll give 95 bits for a collaborative test okay great 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 um, but these projects will be I'll give you a control task some guidelines some constraints and you're gonna come up with your own unique solution and if you're a graduate student you're gonna have a research paper and there are three gates to this. The first one is a project proposal where you're gonna come up with something that is in the realm of control systems, digital control systems that you think is interesting. Amin says, is it gonna be like road vehicle, the projects? In the spirit of that. So the first part of the project for graduate students is a proposal. Find some topic that you're interested in. Number two, you're going to do a literature review. 
So I'm going to have you look up a couple papers on that topic and you're going to write up a review. And then the third stage is you're going to actually execute an independent um, research task related to that topic. Most of the time it's some simulation exploring some controls technique that you've been looking at. Sometimes I've had people do a hands-on project. Somebody built like a camera gimbal that always keeps the camera level no matter where you uh, position the, the stick or whatever. Ad na 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 says, can we get dates for when these gates are gonna be due? Yes. I put that on my to-do list wherever that is. Um, and, and I'm gonna try to get that out to you in the next few days. So this is how you're gonna be assessed. Homework, this is just uh, saying once again, this is one of the most significant parts of the course, but because of that, I'm going to take academic integrity seriously. What do I mean by that in this class? So usually the problems that we run into is um, if people are copying portions of the assignment amongst themselves. Like I have no problem with people working together. In fact, I encourage it because I think the best way that you learn something is through explaining something to another person that really helps you learn. So I love people working together and um, that's great. The problem is, is when I get submissions where the code is, is the same and I can't tell if you really understood what you were doing. And because homework is such a critical part of this class, if I find that, um, I'm just gonna give everybody involved zero credit on that assignment. Um, so that's just what I do. MATLAB or LabVIEW? Great question, Marks. We're going to be using MATLAB. MD Hasanu says, how many homeworks are we having? I'm going to expect somewhere around 10. Somewhere around 10 homeworks. That's my goal. So, um, and if you ever have a question for me, like, is what I'm doing here okay? Or is this going to violate the academic integrity? You can always ask me. And I'll give you feedback. And then I always throw Liam Neeson in here to just let you know how serious I am. Kate says, when will the second project be due? Great question. Let me go. We'll, we'll skip ahead a little bit. If you have the, the syllabus, this is my, my guess at how the semester is going to go. All right. And... Um, we have to be a little flexible depending on how I feel the pe the pacing is going. If I'm like, this is too much or it's too slow. Smiley says, would working together be permitted or does that violate academic integrity? So Smiley, that's a great question. Working together does not violate academic integrity on assignments like, like homework. So I don't mind if you work together. Now, uh, this is where it gets a little more complicated. Like if you guys turn in something where you have the exact same equations, you have the exact same code and, and it's just kind of like copied, that's when it goes beyond working together. So it's, you guys can't work together and have like one submission. Uh, one way that I like to describe it is the work that you submit should be indisputably original so that when uh, when you look at it you know like no this this is my work right here it's nobody else's and um, Liam says can we source code from the MATLAB website as a skeleton that we edit if we reference it that is probably case by case because if I give you an assignment where I really want you to develop a code structure on your own so I, I don't know so I would say that that one's more case by case but always you can always ask me in specific situations and and that's much better than the result
costs of of me having to go through the academic integrity process. Uh, like I, I hate to harp on this, but I, but I do have a couple um, cases every semester. Some cases are more severe. I have had cases where students have failed a course because of academic integrity. So I just want to lay it out there early that I that I take it seriously. Is Simulink going to be used? Um, Fancy Fiend, I sometimes use Simulink, but I usually just use the text editor and build in simulations through that. So I would say I won't explicitly put Simulink in the assignments or the course, but you're welcome to use it. Okay, so, okay. So I have like tentative homework dates. I have our midterm exam. It's gonna be on that Saturday. Project one, and then Kate asked about project two. So we're gonna have two projects. Project two, I'm, I'm looking at assigning it somewhere in week 12. I expect it'll probably be due like week, like the last week. That's my best guess right now. Towards the end, this is where things are gonna go possibly off schedule a little bit because I'm gonna try some new content that I think is cool that I haven't done before in this class. Like LQR, for example, is something very cool. Kate says like during finals. Wait, is, is this, this one isn't finals week, right? Am I wrong about that? I think, I think this is the, the last week of classes. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Last week of classes. Thank you. All right. Um, did I hit... I think I, I think I basically hit everything. If you have other specific questions, come back. Uh, what other courses will you be teaching during this semester? Um, I'm teaching a lab course, MAE 334. Uh, Jack says, what exactly is meant by advanced topics? So it's maybe like another word for miscellaneous. Um, so there are things you can do in digital control systems. Uh, one of them is called deadbeat controller design or finite settling time design. It's where you have a controls task and your control law can complete that in, you could say clearly, like it'll happen in five seconds. That's a little different than continuous controls where Everything is exponentials and technically, okay, we won't get into that too much, but there's like, there, there's interesting topics out there that I may fill in here. Um, bah, 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 bah. Will we go over Kalman filter design? That is something that may come up in advanced topics. That is a very interesting topic. We will go over state estimators and a Kalman filter is a type of state estimator that takes into consideration the uncertainty in your sensors. So MEKFs are whack. Wait, EKF is extended Kalman filter. What's the M? Are we programming PLCs, says Brandon. We won't be programming PLCs. Even though I will show you some basic coding of an Arduino microcontroller. And I'll do some different examples. Okay, let us, let's go over here. Let's get into this. All right, if you have this handout ready, follow along with me. Because now we'll, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit more. We're going to start at the beginning. Uh, so let's talk about the basic goal of control. In my mind, multiplicative extended common filters, good grief, Kate. That sounds 
insane. In my mind, the basic goal of a control is of control is to make a system or maybe just a subset of that system behave the way you want. Mark says nanosat equals nerds. Wow. The nanosat club is great. I want to join the nanosat club. Okay. So <laughs> Okay, so, so that's what you, you want to make something behave the way you want. And additionally, typically you want these other characteristics as well. Do it accurately. So maybe I want an aircraft to follow a certain transition to a higher altitude and I have a trajectory in mind. My control system should have the aircraft follow that as closely as possible. It'll never be perfect, but we, we want it close. So accurately, um, often we want to do it quickly. When we have some controls task, we want the controller to achieve our goals quickly but maybe a, um, a little caveat here, but smoothly. Like when you're in an elevator, wait, what's the fastest elevator in the world? I feel like I've been in a really fast elevator in Taiwan, but it goes very quickly up to like the 90th, 100th stories, but um, it doesn't feel that way when you're actually inside. I'm <laughs> Furnace Hall is not the fastest elevator. That's uh, that's not uh, the Burj Khalifa. Okay. So if you've ever been in one of these super fast, sophisticated elevators, the control system quickly gets you to the desired floor, but uh, it's a very smooth transition. How can I know if a system is theoretically controllable? We'll get into controllability a little later down the line. Okay, some other characteristics. Use minimal energy. Jack Gudo says, the world's fastest elevator developed by Hidachi Building Systems is installed in the Guangzhou CTF Finance Center, 530 meters high skyscraper. The elevator climbs from the first floor to the 95th in around 42 seconds. So it's moving. <laughs> okay, I'll flag him, Hank. Wow, plagiarism, brutal. Okay. Now, associated with this is we want to use minimal cost, typically, to achieve our control's goals. And... Um, here we go, like one way you're gonna save costs is you're gonna use cheaper sensors, you're gonna use cheaper computers, and these are ways to save cost. All right, other concerns you want your control system to be safe in whatever application it is. And something related to this um, is to satisfy constraints of your hardware. Now we'll run into situations like this this semester where you might design a control system that maybe it's it's run by a motor and the control system that you come up with requires a certain amount of torque but your actual hardware has a finite amount of torque it can produce so your controller is actually going to saturate the hardware that you have so um i mean this is something that you'll run into in real life you're going to have torque limitations 
power limitations. I don't know, whatever you can think of, heat production. Kate says, what about wanting an observable system? We'll get into that as well. What do you mean by saturate? What I mean by saturate is, actually, I have a great, I have a great example here. We're gonna move the camera because I'm gonna introduce you to a friend. You might have seen this before. Wait, maybe we'll do this. Ba -ba 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 -ba. This is just a cute little balancing robot that I'm going to use as an example here. Hee <laughs> hee! So, um, I don't really know where he's going. Maybe it's a she. Um, but, but the goal of this robot is basically just to, to stay upright. And even if I were to do something like place my water bottle on top of this, it can still, it can still balance. So yeah, I mean, this is, this is basically like an inverted pendulum or some people call it a mobile inverted pendulum. The same principle here is at play that you have on a Segway robot. Do any of you guys have a Segway? I don't even know if there's still a thing really. Does it have a name? Uh, this is Wally -E from the Pixar animated film. Okay, so. <laughs> let's, let's talk about this guy a little bit. I'm just gonna leave this running but we're gonna come back to ba 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 ba. We're gonna come back to this. Copyrighted? No, 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 no. That this I I um I was the creator of Wally, -E, the Disney animated film. Does it know when it has a mass on it to account for it? No, it doesn't. It has no idea. Um. So maybe I'll actually add another thing that we want from control systems up here. We want our control systems to be robust. So they can perform under uncertain conditions. Oh yeah, get a Wally -E emote going. I know we have we have artists in our community. So like the weight or like the mass on top of this robot, that's something uncertain and it can, it can still perform. Uh, oh, so somebody asked, what, what, is, what do I mean by you have to worry about um, saturation? So what I mean by saturation is this, this robot right here, it has a battery and it's actually, where is it? It's right up in here in between these two plates. And I forget how much voltage it has. It might be like, there's a couple like, I don't know, maybe it's nine volts or something. So that means that, and, and so this is powering the motors. And so the controller on here in the end, it decides how much voltage to send to these motors. The more voltage you send, the more torque, um, but there's a limit. And if I exceed the voltage of this battery, then I effectively saturate the system. And it's possible to design a controller that says, okay, speed these up and give me 100 volts of acceleration. I mean, volts is not the unit of acceleration, but you know what I mean. Basically, I want to just torque these wheels. Well, there's a limit. Um, okay, so we'll get we'll get more to this robot. But why do we need digital control systems theory in addition to continuous controls? So a lot of you took continuous controls. What's the difference here? Okay, so number one is that we use computers for control. 
and they receive data and execute commands at discrete points in time. And this leads to the, the next point. And it's also related to this, this issue of money. So we're using computers to control things and we're trying to save money. And so we use slower computers. And for our sensors, we have slower sampling rates. And this is where digital control systems and continuous control systems start to deviate when the actual hardware that you implement slows down. So here's, here's the point. Continuous control systems theory has some assumptions. And I think the most important assumption is that it assumes an infinite sampling rate, basically like an infinitely fast computer. And um, infinite processing power Now you can get away by using a, um, a control system derived from continuous systems theory for um, many applications. But I think once you get to a slow enough sampling rate, it's not gonna work for you anymore. And, and so this Eligu Tumblr robot, that's what it's called. I didn't actually make this myself. You can pick this up on Amazon. Um, Jebu asks, what kind of microcontroller you're using? So let, let's talk about this Eligu Tumblr robot. A scandalous, I know, I know, very scandalous. Um, so just to give you some background, at least when I got this, it, it was like around $90. And it's advertised as like an educational Christmas present. Um, so you, you're going to be using a cheap computer. So what is the computer on here? Maybe I can point it out to you. Yes, it came with, with code already on it, although it's, um, it's all open source. So you can go in and edit the code. Okay, the computer, wait, I'm on the wrong side, is this, this chip. Um, it's an Arduino, oh, I'm getting a bad angle. This kind of long flat chip, it's an Arduino Nano. So this is the computer. An Arduino Nano is around $5. It's a very cheap, micro uh microcontroller all right so that's around five dollars and then obviously the goal of this robot is to balance and so it has to have some sensor which gives us an indication of how balanced we are and the sensor is this guy you've used that orange driver for wheels before yeah 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 this chip is uh, an IMU. It's got a gyroscope and an accelerometer built in. So the most critical piece of this sensor is it measures the rate at which this robot is pitching. So I mean, if you were just thinking about very basic control logic, if the robot starts pitching this way, the sensor is detecting that. And so then I need to command the wheels to roll forward to kind of get out in front of that and rebalance the robot. And that's the basic idea here. Uh, 
Then we got the ultrasonic range sensor. Th this isn't used for balance, but it's just uh, detecting any objects out in front if you want to uh, not run into them. Okay, so Arduino Nano, like five bucks. I think the most expensive thing on here is the motors. Okay, so we're talking about the difference between continuous and digital control systems. The sampling rate on this computer is somewhere, I'm not totally sure, but it's south of 200 hertz, between 100 and 200 samples per second. And that actually, when you think about it, that's that's pretty fast. If this is reading data from that gyroscope 200 times a second and then making corrections to the motor 200 times a second, that sounds adequate. And it is. But that's still slow enough to where if you design a control system with continuous systems theory, you're going to get different behavior in real life than uh, the behavior you predicted. Um, you know what I'm saying. You're going to get different behavior in real life. And that's why you have to like go back and tune your controller to where it actually behaves the way you want. But with digital control systems theory, accounting for the slower sampling rate, you're going to get much better predictability on the performance. Um, Okay, let's let's leave it there for now because I want to move ahead a little bit. Let's put this camera back. Okay. So just some basic concepts for controls. If you want to control a thing, you have to be able to predict how that thing responds to the control inputs that you can apply. So actually, let's look at the second example here first. If I want to control the pitch angle of this two-wheeled robot, I want to drive it to vertical. I have to know how this pitch angle responds to motor torque because that, that's actually what I'm controlling. So. Um, how do I know what to tell the motors to do if I want to adjust the pitch angle? You have to have that relationship. Or if you want to control the altitude of an aircraft, you're going to have to know how the altitude responds to your basic control surfaces. And when we're talking about how robust your controller is, we know that the way an aircraft responds is going to be different in different wind conditions. And your weight changes as you expend fuel so we need some predictive capabilities and in order to predict you need a mathematical model so if you want to control something you have to know the relationship between how you can actually affect the system and how the system will respond. And we use mathematical models to get that relationship. So I think the last thing we'll do today, we're gonna make a little um, flow chart here to talk about mathematical models. Wait, 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 when does this class end? Did I already run over time? 140 130 it ended four minutes ago it already has good grief okay um all right what we're gonna do actually i think this will be fine what we'll what we'll do we'll pick up here on wednesday we're gonna fill in this flow chart 
And then we're going to move on to this next handout where we talk about signals. Good, good, good. And then Friday, this is one of my favorite, um, this is one of my favorite lectures. If you haven't heard of Fibonacci's rabbits, this, this is pretty cool. Um, I am so excited. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. MATLAB Python link. Let me get that. Um, so, guys, this is, this is basically how lecture goes. And will there be office hours today? Yep, I'll be there on Discord today if you want to talk to me about anything. Um, better than Zoom, yeah. I'm looking forward to this semester with you guys. We're going to have a good time. We're going to work hard. And we're going to cover a lot of good stuff. This is very practical knowledge, very useful. Um, excuse me. So I hope you enjoy it. I look forward to getting to know you guys. I really enjoy this job. Okay, I'm going to find this link for you. Python versus MATLAB commands. Let's go over here. Hey, thank you guys. Offworlder says, great to be back for round two. Yes. Okay, let's see if this is the... Hey, have a good one, Belkut. Trogdur, JG Kelly, H Swan. Let's see if this is it. I don't think this is the one. Nukas says, thanks, Dr. E. Hey, thank you. This is getting closer to what I'm talking about. I don't think this is the exact website, but this is the kind of information that I think is great. If you know MATLAB right now and you're interested in in making the transition to Python, this is how I would do it. Pull up a project that you've done in MATLAB and then try to replicate that result in Python. So something that's nice, like we know in MATLAB when you define a variable, you have a little semicolon afterwards. Python, not necessary. Um, if you're making a for loop in MATLAB, Looks like this. This is how you do it there. My muscle memory though, yeah, I know. But it is good for your brain to disrupt. Let me, I'm gonna throw this website link in the chat. Let's see what other stuff this has. Multiplication, plotting. Offworlder says, I joined class late. Are we using Python for class? No, we're, we're going to use MATLAB. But I was just saying that um, I think that eventually I want to transition to, to Python. Because when you get out in the world, MATLAB is really expensive. Kaipro says, I'm so excited for this class. Very excited and interesting. Glad I'm taking that. Hey, I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited too. Oh, this is, this is also very good. I'm going to give you this link. Is Python open source? Yeah, it's totally free. I'll tell you my story. When I graduated from, from graduate school, and, and I graduated from UB, I was used to having MATLAB, but then because I wasn't a student anymore, 
my license ran out. I didn't have MATLAB anymore. So I was like, how am I going to do um, any computing? And so I was, I was forced at that point to use Python. And I used resources like this to, to make the switch. Hash Brown, wish I was taking this course. I wish you were taking this course too. That guy who stinks says, do you have an IDE recommendation for Python? The one that I use, and I haven't used it in a little while, I think it's Anaconda. I think it's Anaconda. Let me check. I don't even have it on this desktop. Let's see. We'll go back over here. PyCharm is good. I've heard PyCharm is, is very good. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, maybe it's Spider? Plus one for PyCharm. Is PyCharm the one? S yeah, this is the one that I used. I use Spider. I don't know if it's the best or whatever, but I got I got used to it. This is what it looks like. Spider is the default in the Anaconda. You don't like Spider. What's wrong with Spider? Uh... Okay. Maybe PyCharms. Maybe PyCharms the way to go. Yeah, what I did is I like this is from when I was first learning. I went back and did like some homework assignments that I had done before. And I just did it in Python. <sighs> if you aren't confident in your programming skills, you should use a text editor, not an IDE. Is there an ODE45 equivalent in Python though? I, I bet there is. Guarantee, guarantee it. Or, um, I guess when you, it's called NumPy. Could you resend the second link? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, ooh, here we go. How's your first day going, everybody? First day of the spring semester. Good, 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 good. What's the sampling rate of a human to keep balance? That's a fantastic question. I know that balance um, so the inner ear is very important for your balance and, um, less important is the visual feedback. And I've thought about that. Like what is, it's not infinitely. Yeah. Like that's a really great question because, uh, okay. So we know that there's a sampling rate or at least a perception limit because we experience aliasing visually. So what do I mean by that? Like when you look at um, the wheels of a car spinning, sometimes it looks visually like the wheel is like slowly spinning backwards. Have you ever experienced that before? That is um is an effect of perceiving something at a slower rate than it's physically moving so that's how i like intuitively know that humans we have some sampling rate limitations in our 
senses. Uh, who's excited for 16 straight weeks? This, yeah, I, you know, they are encouraging professors to build in some breaks. So we'll have to think about what that looks like for this class. Um, my liver's ready for 16 straight weeks. What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, yeah. Are the breaks mandatory? No, I think it's just like a... There's not a strict policy. They're, they're just like suggesting, hey, everybody, there's not a spring break. Try to work in... Try to work in some breaks. So... We'll take we'll take some day. I but they took a week away. I know. Yeah, I know. It's tough not having a spring break. Spring break is usually like it's the thing you look forward to to just catch your breath. So I suggest all of you find a way, whatever that looks like for you, to catch your breath. Used to be perfect break right in the middle of the semester. Yeah. Well, we'll keep coming back to it, talking about how we can get breaks throughout this semester so we don't go crazy. Keep ahead on assignments. No fallback week. Yeah. We're going to try to keep everybody on track. All right, guys. I think I am going to eat some lunch. This class isn't one of my worries. Estes is the bestest. Hey, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, I want to be sensitive to your guys' needs. Um, but I also want us to learn a lot and practice a lot and become confident in control systems. I think I'm gonna have some chicken, maybe some, some rice. Pika, excited to finally take a class with you. Hey, I'm excited to have you on board. Read it aloud. Thanks for your energy. My pleasure. We'll try to bring we'll try to bring the energy. Yeah, I think it'll be a fun class. I think it'll be a fun class. All right, everybody. I'll be uh, on Discord for office hours, but um, I'll see you Wednesday. Really looking forward to it with you guys. Adios.